All right, guys, so here we go one more time with another exciting lesson. This time around, what we're going to be doing is taking a look at post, get, and forms. Logan's going to show you some neat little tricks on how we can take data and we can pass it from one page to another, along with a few other things as well. So with that, Logan, let's go ahead and show him some cool stuff. Okay, and so what, we need, what we're going to be doing is actually processing input that a user would give to a PHP script either through through a link or it's like typing in data into a form. Now, let's see. You've probably seen links that where after the uh, reference to a script or a file, they do question mark and then do a variable equals something. Oh or yeah, that's all those cryptic link looking things that pop up all the time, and sometimes it's far worse than that. Sometimes I get like percent symbols and all sorts of real goofy things. Yeah, Surely you guys out there know what I'm talking about. So break it down for us there. Yeah, so what this is is it's one method of giving data to a script. Uh, after the question mark, these when the um, script runs, these uh, actually get parsed into a certain array inside of PHP. That array is called dollar sign underscore get. Hmm, interesting. This, this array stores anything that's been given to the script after a question mark, basically. So underscore gets like an array. Yes, it's an array, and the elements are actually named, as in we did test equals five, so there would be an element inside this array called test. Ah, that makes sense. Now, you can turn register globals on and get access to a variable called dollar sign test, but in this this is um, this will always work. That's you a don't sure have to have that turned on. Yeah. So this is what's going to hold that, that data we've sent to the script. So inside of PHP, let's go ahead and echo that back out just to verify. So I'm going to save the script as, let's say, var test. Var .php. Now, he's taken a very direct approach to this for those of you guys that are complete beginners. He could have also just simply taken a variable and, and dumped that information into the variable and then echoed the variable out, if that right. kind of makes things a little bit easier for you guys to see. So whatever... So now we're echoing out that dollar sign underscore get. So whatever we set test to th uh, from the URL. So now it becomes dynamic. He can change it, rerun and it, and there it is. Anything I type in, now PHP is aware of and can use. Ah, this makes things very helpful. So now you can actually work with data from that from the browser this would and this method is used more commonly from from links that have to give information to a PHP script so whatever you put in there it's going to be available inside that array you can pull it out and utilize it but let me ask you this what happens if it's blank right now the PHP script wouldn't care if you put it set it to blank but it's just could that echo nothing. possibly get us in trouble later in code? I mean, would there ever be times we'd need to check to see if it was blank? Right. If, say, someone was putting entering some information and some fields were required, and you wanted the script to be able to check and make sure, like you wouldn't have a script that's re relying on them putting their phone number in and then be able to just put a blank, put nothing in. Okay. Or forget to put their email in if you need to get a hold of them. Okay, so how could we check to see if it's if it's blank? Well, this is a variable, so we could do uh, we could do some tests on it. There's a function in P PHP called strlen, and this function takes in a variable and it gives back the uh, it counts it gives back the length of the string, meaning it counts the characters and gives you how many characters are in the string. Now again, Logan's taking the very direct approach. For those of you out there that are complete beginners, Logan, go ahead and do me a favor and right above that, just two lines. Go ahead and use the dollar get set that up into a variable. So dollar sign. So dollar yeah. sign var equals exactly. All right, dollar sign var equals. So let me move this out real quick. I'm just, what I'm wanting to do is have him just kind of take a detour, just for a minute or two, for you guys that are complete beginners, and show you other ways that we can write this that may make a little bit more sense with the way the course material has been presented so far in this VTM and the last VTM. Okay, so we're getting whatever whatever they put um, whatever they set test to. We're going to put that in, into dollar sign var, which of course we could have always said echo dollar sign var. Right. So right here, this could and be echo dollar sign var. And then he's going to kill me, but I'm going to have him add another line then in between the two and call this one dollar, just give it something that represents a link, S-S-L-E-N or something, or that's good, equals. And now what I want him to do is actually go ahead and use string length function and feed it. He could feed it the dollar underscore get thing from above. Go ahead right, and copy and paste that just so that they, they see it. So you could grab this because this has that data we're looking for in, so in exactly. it. Exactly. So we could paste that. And, of course, the dollar underscore get uh, subtest is basically you know, converted into whatever is being stored in it. Or he could simply put a variable inside that function as well. Yep. So go ahead and do that.
There you go. So now he's sending string length var, and string length will then figure up how many characters are in var and put that back over into dollar len, and he's then going to echo dollar len out or dollar length. Dollar yeah, so we find the length, and then finally we we store that in len, and then we echo len. I'm just sorry to kind of take the long way around it, and no, I wouldn't do it like right. this, but I'm just kind of I think it helps right. beginners. You could bury it all inside of one one echo or one if statement, but then you have stuff inside of parentheses, inside of more parentheses, and get, it and can't be confusing for, to look for a at. beginner. That could be really confusing. So let me save that out and see what it returns. So if we actually give it something like cat. We have three characters in cat. We have five in Jayhawk. So now you can see it. And how many do we have in blank? We have blank. Ooh. So that's the case we need to be looking for. Well, in a sense, we need to make sure that there are more than zero characters. Ah, so let me say something right here. You just said something that's really critical in a way to a new programmer. We need to check something. Right. Ah, so this kind of brings us back to the last lesson. We need to use an if statement to check the length of whatever's been sent in. Right. So instead of immediately echoing len, or we could go a line above it, and instead of immediately echoing, we could do if dollar sign len, let's say, is greater than zero. Greater than zero. Well, yeah, we'll start simple. And then we'll echo out the length of it. Yeah, let me actually put that inside then. And then we'll say, then we'll do an else, just so that we remind them about the last lesson, and we'll echo out uh, the, that there's nothing there, something along those lines. Poor guy has to type and talk. God, what a tough <laughs> job. Actually, I'm not talking, so I should be able to type, which is weird. <laughs> Error, no input. Napuo, Napuo input. Okay, so, so let's go ahead and save this and see what we got now. So now we go and we just refresh this. No input. Because but it's then blank. if we do put anything, even one letter, we get ah. the length back from that one letter. Okay, very cool. So now we can test and make sure that they, say, didn't leave a field blank. All right, very cool. So with that, that's... Um, so now we see that we can actually retrieve data that comes in on a... Well, let me ask you this real quick. How would there be multiple pieces of data in the link? From that, you can use um, the ampersand after you say test equals A. We could say and, let's say, test or var2 equals Jayhawk. See, I told you they used all these funky symbols up there. So it's probably kind of hard to see, but and symbol, and then the next uh, variable we're going to have what it equals. Now, so go ahead and if you could real quick, go ahead and in the code show us uh, show us the use of both of those. All right, if we wanted to actually use that, you could write a real quick program that says that the first one is equal to so many characters and the second one is equal to so many characters. Okay. So to do that, we would need to so you want to just write it above the if or sure, however you want to do it. All right. So first Poor guys being put on <laughs> the spot. So I'm not going to make multiple versions of var. I'm just going to keep resetting it. So after the first one, so we're getting the length of that test variable that we already had. And let's go and copy this line out real quick. Yeah, we don't even need an if for this. We're just going to simply right. echo out the length. And then we want but we want to get that other variable, so we're going to do this over again. Of course, there's, there's more efficient ways of doing this, but this is just to show both values and how you get to a different value. So go ahead and kill the big if statement down there. Okay. Well... I'll be rewriting that in a second because we're going to actually use it to test. Ah. So here's the cool thing. Since we are going to be using this later in the script, but we don't want to work with it now, we can use exit to terminate the script at this point. Absolutely. It's telling it just stop the script here, ignore everything after it. Okay. So right now what we should get is basically we're going to be taking a look at test, but we need to change that second test right there. To var2, okay. where I named it var2 equals whatever. And that's going to be now uh, that will be another element inside this dollar sign get array. Okay, so we're going to be echoing out the length of the first one, and then we're going to be echoing out the length of the second one. And we probably need to have some sort of the VR in the there. Line. So let me just yeah. put this in here like such. And echo out a... Yeah. Cool. So, refresh this. So, a... Okay, yeah, I hit refresh and it cleared what I had written. So, but that's a, but that's a really good example because look at the second one. There is no second one at that time. Yeah, there wasn't so even a variable, so, so of course, course there's going to be nothing in it. Var two equals. So one and five. Or if he did, 
So how, whatever you change. So now we're getting to where we actually write fully dynamic scripts based on input. Three and five. Ooh. So that's how you would get to multiple variables if you needed to send multiple variables to a script using this method. Excellent. Okay, now I think they kind of get the basic understanding of how they can pass information into a page through these variables. Well, how can we use it? What's it good for? Um, for like, the actual use of the information, you could store it in a database or do whatever you want with it. Okay, we have any examples? I mean, I know we got... Like, um, you could write a guest book or, yeah. I think we'll be doing the guest book coming up real soon, as a matter of Actually, fact. Actually, we will. Yeah, we'll be writing a guest book. Okay, so right now, is there anything else that we can show in this section? I mean, I know we're supposed to be talking about get, post, and form. So what else can we show them? Well, we can actually write a form to u to utilize this. Give basically uh, something that the user can type into and click instead of typing a cryptic UR URL. Yeah, that would really sink going to a website and them telling you, type this above and include these variables. Ugh. Yeah, so go yeah. ahead. Set up a form. So I'm going to take um, that section out, including the exit. So we basically have just the code necessary to get the dollar sign, or to get the test variable, and then check its length. Now, outside, you can you could have the uh, the PHP echo out some HTML. I'm just going to go after the closing PHP tag and start writing the HTML for a form. So, form action equals. Let's see, since we're going to be we're check this is we're basically just going to have the form be submitting to itself. That's um, let me type out the the uh, the whole form line first, and I'll explain it. Action equals. As he's typing, I'll just remind you that we're not going to be going in depth into HTML coding. So while he can talk a little bit about this, we're not going to get into it heavily. All right. So this is basically making an HTML form. When this form is submitted, it will be going to vartest.php. And the method is get. Remember the little dollar sign underscore get. So we have we're sending. That's that's basically what uh, gets called. It's a method of sending data. Now inside this form, I'm going to create an input tag. Input. And its type will be. I type in equals the text. So basically just the text box um, to type in. And name equals. We'll call this test. So we'll still be uh, submitting to that test element in the get array. And then we need to make the actual button for the user to hit. So input type equals submit name. Well, actually, submit. We just need a value. We just need to actually write what the, uh, the button actually says. So value equals submit. This is what the button will actually, s or the name, or what's written on the button. So with that, that should work. So save var test, and let me go and erase everything after. And no input because nothing's been sent to it yet. And a zero. And a zero for the length as well, because I probably forgot to take out an echo somewhere. But anyway, now I've got a text box and a submit button. So what happens if we type something in it? Type submit. And look at that. It's well, okay, we have two echoes in there. Let me go clean it up a little <laughs> bit. You can see, and look at that. We remember I erased all everything in the question mark and everything after it. After I hit submit, it actually that's what it did. It went to this and added that question mark test equals Jayhawk for for actually using the get method to submit data. Very cool. Now let's go ahead and jump back in the code and kind of clean it up a little bit. So we were already echoing checking for length. And let's see. So echo in or don't echo. So refresh. So you type. So now you can type anything you want. You don't have to mess with the URL. You just um, it's more user friendly this way. Okay. Now you notice how whatever you type, it's getting added up here. And if you had more text boxes, each each text box or input element would actually become another. Like whatever you named it. Notice that that um, we named it test, and that's how it got submitted. Is it's it's um, submitting under this name. But you don't you really don't always text. want that to be visible up there, do you? No, there's um, you may want to just keep that hidden. Like say you have a complicated search engine, and this URL goes on forever. If you want to keep this nice and clean, you can use you can change the method you use. Instead of using get, you can change this to post. And then you'll have to change the dollar sign underscore, dollar sign underscore post. This since it's uh, it stores get and post in two different arrays or predefined arrays. So 
with this method, if we type something in, submit, and we didn't refresh the page, it's still been open. So if I let's see, there. So see no the question mark and all that good stuff after the end. So yeah, the URL stays clean, but it's still submitting the data. Whatever we type, like if we type times these, that should have a lot of characters in it. Submit, 16 characters. Submit, no input. Very nice. So that way, it's just a way, if you know that you're never going to need to see the data, you can use post to keep that hidden, keep the URL a lot cleaner. Okay, very cool. So we have one thing that, just in case, some of the beginners out there aren't catching this, basically what's happening is this form is being told to submit to itself. In other words, we call this page again. And that PHP code executes up there at the beginning and prints out what we needed to print out before you actually see the form when the page is re-rendered in your browser. Yep, sounds good. All right, Logan, is there anything else that we might need to tell them about uh, forms and all? Let's see, just looking at the form input type, we've got two input types right now that we're using, text and submit. I said that we weren't going to get into this real deep, but I just want to tell you guys there are multiple input types that are available yeah, to you use. You can make drop-downs, text lists, text boxes. Absolutely, and you can find a list of those on the site. But you can't go in there and just type any text you want there, can you, Logan? In in here? Yeah, as far as the input type. You can't call it text right. to text, can you? Yes, well, it'll okay. it'll default to text. There if you mess go. up the name and just like leave off the T, save it, and refresh. It's it'll, it's still a text box. It's it just defaults to that. If you give an invalid type, it'll right. default to text box. Very good. Okay, and um, let's see anything else we want to get. Another give. thing to note would be where I specified the method. Remember, I s before I had method equals get, and it was the same thing as it was using the get method. Then I changed it to post. If you completely omit method, it defaults to get. Okay. Yeah, definitely good to know. All right. Well, I guess that this would probably be enough in enough information now. Where we could, let's say, write a guest book maybe? Yep. That's I mean, you know how to get information from somebody now. You know how to check to make sure the information exists. So then we could give them some little errors if they left something off, let's say. And we know how to handle writing information into a database as well. Well, do we know how to in handle writing information? We have. We have. We've used, we've used uh, uh, MySQL queries, and we have use the MySQL monitor to input yeah, data. Which, yeah, exactly. So, so the it's the same thing. It's basically just running a MySQL command or query. Yeah, absolutely. I'm just making sure we got all our grounds covered, and I think so. So with this, this is going to conclude this lecture right here, and what we're going to do is go ahead and move forward into actually creating something usable, a guest book. Thanks, guys.